2019 quarterback class. This is not every quarterback who was drafted that year, just some of them, and plenty of them got a chance to play last year. One name in particular did not play much, but he is a major focal point heading into 2020. Let's go through some of these guys with what we think their floor and ceiling would be for 2020. And let's start with the guy who was the offensive rookie of the year, Kyler Murray. Chris, I, I've, I've made it clear. I, I think know. that he could be the fourth straight second year quarterback who takes the NFL by storm. Carson Wentz did it in 2017, then Patrick Mahomes in 2018, Lamar Jackson last year. I think it can be Kyler Murray this year. We met with Cliff Kingsbury, the coach of the Cardinals at the scouting combine. And he he's in that same camp that there could be a huge dramatic jump that makes Kyler Murray the NFL's next big thing this year. Yeah, I, I'm with you. You know, I, I mean, you know, when I saw this exercise we were doing, you know, you think about the ceiling for Kyler Murray, you know, it's to me, it's and I think I'm with you, Mike, it's kind of in that MVP conversation. You know, I don't think Arizona will be good enough for him to win the MVP. That's what just, you know, my gut tells me, it, it, looking at the, you know, the, the 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 roster on paper at this point and their division and everything. But I look at the ceiling for Kyler Murray as going, he, he gets MVP votes. I mean, he's in the conversation this year. That That's what I think ultimately I look at it. And I don't know, Mike, when I look at the floor, I think the floor is like a little bit like where we, what we saw this year, where we just went, ah, okay, yeah, it was a good year. You know, it was a great year. I don't want to say that, but like statistically, 20 touchdowns, you know, double digit interceptions. I think that's about as bad as it could get. And I don't really imagine that happening, really. People were mad that he was offensive rookie of the year. There were a lot of folks that thought Raiders running back Josh Jacobs should have gotten it. I think that Murray was the offensive rookie of the year. And I agree with you. It's just a question of how much he builds upon what he did last year. What he did last year is a given. I'd be stunned by a regression from Kyle Murray. The question right. is, how much higher can he push his performance? And look, MVP is tough because it, it's going to go to the best player, typically on one of the two teams that emerge with the top seed. And now the top right. seed has even greater importance because that's the only seed per conference that gets a buy. I think it's going to cause the voters to gravitate even more towards somebody from one of the top two seeds. It's going to be very difficult for the Cardinals to emerge with the top seed in the NFC, given the division that they're assigned to. The Giants uh, most likely will not have the top seed in 2020. Daniel Jones, a controversial top 10 pick. You came around on Daniel Jones, and a lot of other people did as well. Let's uh, figure out where his ceiling and his floor may be for the coming season. Chris, how good can he be? Ooh, I mean, I, I loved what I saw from Daniel Jones. I really did. I mean, yeah, it was probably one of the most you know, egregiously wrong draft evaluations I ever did. I'm in full transparency. There's no doubt about it. He crapped all over what I thought about him in the draft. He was phenomenal last year. You know, Mike, again, I look at Daniel Jones and, you know, I think the ceiling, I look at like Pro Bowl votes. I don't think maybe Pro Bowl was realistic, but Pro Bowl votes, I do. And opening up a lot of eyes to where we go, whoa, this guy, he can throw that ball and make some big time plays. And you know, he's got some good receivers around him, not great. But I think that's kind of the floor, that type of, I mean, the ceiling, that type of conversation. The floor, you know, again, I don't see the, the, the like, the wheels falling off here. I don't know how you feel about it. But I think, like, the floor, I look at a year of, like, okay, the Giants are mediocre, and he still has some turnover issues, all right? I think that's where I would look at as the floor. But I don't think it's going to be like, oh, my gosh, we've made a horrible mistake and we need to think about making a, another quarterback draft pick here sometime in the next few years. No, I don't see that happening. And look, Saquon Barkley, the guy who I think, if used properly, allows Daniel Jones to flourish because it it, it draws extra defenders up toward the line of scrimmage, creates some favorable yep. matchups in the passing game. And Jason Garrett is the offensive coordinator. We talked about this a few weeks ago. People cringe at the idea of Jason Garrett being the offensive coordinator of the Giants. When you think about what he accomplished as an offensive coordinator, maybe you shouldn't cringe. Maybe the problems with Jason Garrett were more about trying to be both head coach and offensive play designer and I play think so. at the same time. Focusing solely on the one job uh, with with talent that is – it's not apples to apples, and, and I don't want to suggest like the Giants have an offensive line anywhere close to what the, the Cowboys had, but – You've got a great it's running getting back better. like the Cowboys did. And you've yeah. got a quarterback who can be very good like the Cowboys did. And uh, that that is an ingredient in all of this 
that will contribute to Daniel Jones' performance. So I agree with you. He's a guy who could be fringe pro bowler uh, as the the ceiling. And, uh, you know, the floor would just be, it just doesn't work with Jason Garrett. It just all falls apart. That, that he, and, right. he and Garrett just don't see eye to eye. They don't mesh. I don't see that happening. But, you know, that to me, it, it I could see, a, I'd see a regression for him before a regression for Kyler Murray. Do you agree with that? I would agree with that. Yes, I do. You know, Kyler Murray, you know, just, you know, Cliff Kingsbury being in that offense really for, throughout his college career into the NFL, the weapons he has around him, Kyler Murray, I think it'll be hard for him to fail, especially statistically and things like that. You know, Daniel Jones, yeah, I'm with you. I don't expect anything bad either. And I really, Mike, I think you make a good point with the Jason Garrett thing. You know, this is going to be a, he'll be able to use a similar formula that he used with that Cowboy offense. You're right, not the greatest offensive line or not as good as Dallas, but certainly better to be able to run the football. Has a really good tight end and Evan Ingram. You know, Darius Slayton was impressive as a rookie last year. He was kind of a hidden gem for them. So uh, I do expect big things. Yeah, I don't expect them to light the world on fire, though, because I don't think the Giants will be good enough to do that quite yet. All right, Washington quarterback Dwayne Haskins, the 15th overall pick last year behind Murray and Jones, eventually played uh, kind of a mixed bag. And, and, and there are questions about how prepared he really was. Dysfunctional teams do dysfunctional things. I think sometimes right. you put a quarterback in an organization like that and you're not going to have a stellar performance right away. But now with Ron Rivera there, and Ron Rivera's been ambivalent about Dwayne Haskins, well, what's, what's the best case scenario for Haskins this year as he gets accustomed to a new coaching staff? Well, I, I think they're just staying on the field for 16 weeks and having success, you know, and if that means, you know, 25 touchdowns and 12 interceptions, then that's a great year. You know, Dwayne Haskins still, yes, I mean, he's young. He hasn't played a ton of football. He only played one year at Ohio State. So he's still learning the position. He's still growing into being a, a young man. You know, he's, so there is talent there. There's no doubt. But it's raw. And, you know, it's raw, I think, all th across the board. You know, Mike, the one thing I keep hearing with Dwayne Haskins this year, too, as much as I love his talent, is, oh, he's really in shape. Well, that tells you that he must have not been in great shape to begin with. You know, so those aren't things like, you know, franchise quarterbacks. They're OCD type A type people. They never get out of shape. Brady doesn't go home and go, well, I'm going to let my beer, my beer belly grow out and then I'll get back in shape after. No, he never stops. And, you know, those are the things I think Dwayne Haskins has got to learn. But I think like that's the ceiling to me. It's not a great support system there. They have some building of that offense to go. You know, the floor, Mike is the fact that he maybe gets benched and a guy like Will Greer does have to come in and play a handful of games or whatever it may be. But I, I think that's generally the area where I feel it will be at. You know, it's funny, as you explained that, it reminded me of a story that Jameis Winston told early in his career. He stumbled his way into a Pro Bowl berth as others tapped out. And, uh, you know, as he was at the buffet eating bacon and eggs, he saw guys like Russell Wilson coming back from an intense workout and the light bulb went off for him. If I'm ever going to be anything in the NFL, I've got to commit right. myself to this. There's, there's no vacations. It's your life. It's your lifestyle. It's what you do right. every single day to get your body to the point where it has to be where it needs to be so you can be as effective as you can be. And I agree with you on Dwayne Haskins. I, look, if, if he's just the starter all year long, that's a win. I don't expect him to right. be a superstar. This is all about proving that you belong and then building on that in 2021. And the, the, uh, uh, the, the floor would just be, he gets benched. He gets benched right. for uh, anyone other than Dwayne Haskins. And, and I know that uh, Kyle Allen from the Panthers, who was traded to Washington's in the mix, Alex Smith still wants to play, but uh, we'll see how that goes. 2019 class of quarterbacks. We talked earlier in the program about Kyler Murray, Daniel Jones, Dwayne Haskins, the three first round picks and all three saw some playing time last year with Murray being the NFL's Offensive Rookie of the Year. Let's move on to Drew Locke, Chris. He's a guy that you and I both believed in, and one of the reasons I believed in him is because you were so so uh, sure of his abilities, that dynamic that we often see where if a quarterback had left a year earlier when the team was better, he would have been drafted higher. Isn't that amazing that that becomes a factor in the evaluation I know. of the quarterback? The team isn't good as last year, so he falls down the board because of it, even though it's the same damn guy. But uh, that's good for the Broncos. They didn't have to use a first-round pick on him. They traded down from number 10 with the Steelers. They didn't take him in the lower spot in round one. They were able to get him at number 42. And now, after, after plenty of swings and misses by 
John Elway, he's got a quarterback they can build around, and I think the the ceiling for Drew Locke is Pro Bowl this year yeah. based upon what we saw at the end of last season. I, I, Mike, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I think, you know, I don't know if I'll go as strong to say Pro Bowl, but I think Pro Bowl votes are in that conversation. You know, he's got a game that you know reminds me of Matt Stafford in a lot of way. The guy can, he can really, the ball pops out of his hands. This is an explosive arm. And he can throw the ball a lot of different ways, off his back foot, side arm, you know, on the run, whatever it may be. So uh, I do think he is a guy that could be one of those names, like as far as the ceiling's concerned, where we're going, man, Drew Locke is, he's a superstar on the rise. Watch out for this kid. He, you know, has the potential to be in my top 10 next year in, in the quarterback rankings, all those type of things. Ceiling? You know, I, I mean, the floor, Mike, I don't know. Where are you out on the floor? The floor conversation, I go like, okay, a lot of turnovers. I don't think he's going to get benched or anything like that, but maybe careless with the ball and has a year where he throws 23 touchdowns and 18 interceptions, and maybe they lose a game or, or a few games because of his carelessness. That's, to me, where I see the floor. Or if he just doesn't mess with Pat Shermer, right? I mean, Pat Shermer did a great job as offensive coordinator in Minnesota, good enough to become the head coach of the Giants. It lasted just a couple of years, just like his previous stint as a head coach with the Browns. And and one of the things that resonates with me about Pat Shermer, Mike Holmgren, who hired him to be the coach in Cleveland, gives Pat Shermer a hard time for being too intense. Mike Holmgren, of all people, one of the most intense coaches that, that has ever patrolled a sideline, thinks Pat Shermer needs to lighten up Francis. So uh, you, you know, that that's just, you know, if we're trying to find – Things that we can can point to where it can go off the rails. I mean, if Shermer and Locke just don't mesh, that's one of the things that could cause it to not work. And and then maybe Locke regresses over that 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 brilliance. Uh, yeah, brilliance may be right. too strong. But what what we saw we saw a guy. We saw who, a lot of when positive. They beat the Texans yeah. when they beat the Texans. That was so remarkable. The Texans are a playoff team, and they went in there and they thumped the Texans, and he was having fun. He was doing the Buzz Lightyear thing. It was just a joy that we don't often see from quarterbacks. It, it just It's the kind of thing you want to see. And uh, and so, yeah, I, I expect to see more of that this year. I hope to see yeah. more of that this year. The Broncos fans deserve that after some down years. But, uh, you know, one of the things that could cause it to go haywire is if he and Shermer just don't see eye to eye. Yeah, I know you're right. And uh, I would be shocked if that happened. You know, first off, I'm a fan of the Pat Shermer offense. I am. And then, you know, I know we've talked about this a lot, but Mike Munchak being the offensive, uh, offensive line coach there. And then, hey, just like we've talked about with any of these guys, Mike, and that's why I think we put Drew Locke maybe in the Pro Bowl conversation when we talk about the ceiling, is he's got a support system. You know, they're fixing the offensive line. It's Melvin Gordon and Phil Lindsay at running back. You know, it's – Jerry Judy and Sutton and KJ Hamler and Noah Fant as your receivers or, or targets to throw the football to. So, you know, again, I would not be shocked if we walked away from this year and went, man, Denver got it into the wild card playoffs. Drew Locke was statistically one of the best quarterbacks in football and, you know, was throwing close to 5,000 yards or something like that. I wouldn't be shocked to see any of that type of stuff this year. He has that type of talent. I think the coaching is good, and then, of course, the talent on the field is good to where I think they can win some football games and be dangerous in the AFC. The wild card in all of this is Jarrett Stidham, a guy who didn't play much, if at all, last year in the regular season, maybe just a cameo appearance. We, we did the breakdown last week based upon preseason game against the Giants. What is the ceiling and the floor for the one guy that we'll be talking about on this list that, that didn't do enough last year in the regular season for us to even have a basis for deciding no. how good or bad he could be. No, you're right. I, I mean, though, another guy that just, he's just like Drew Locke, Mike, just like you talked about with Drew Locke. If he leaves two years earlier, you know, the same year we talked about Drew Locke leaving, Jared Stidham's going to be one of the top 40 picks of the draft. I have no doubt about that. But Auburn fell apart, and then we all blamed Jared Stidham, and then he fell down the draft boards because of that, which is just so stupid. But – you know, uh, I don't know if New England's offense has the capability or the personnel right now to be, like, really, really explosive and, you know, take take the NFL by storm but points and yards and all of that. So I think the way I look at the ceiling of Jared Stidham is him being a starting playoff quarterback. I think that's very capable where, yes, he's not blowing us out of the water, but we go, oh, man, guy keeps making big throws and big moments. They keep winning games. 
You know, yeah, it might not be for 350 yards and three touchdowns. It might be a lot of like, you know, Tom Brady early career type games where you go, hey, he was 17 for 25 for 225 yards and two touchdowns and no interceptions. And they won the football game. And when he needed to make big throws, he did it. I think that's how I look at the ceiling with Jared Stidham. What about you? Yeah, I mean, the ceiling is the, the, he steps right in and runs the offense. And, uh, you know, if you kind of blur your eyes a little bit, it kind of looks like Tom Brady back there. Now, we right. saw last week a, a degree of mobility, a level of speed that Tom Brady has never possessed if, if and when Jared Stidham has to get out of the pocket and run the ball. Um, and, and as you've said, the arm isn't as strong as Brady's was, but if he can run the offense, I mean, this is going to be the real test. And, and this is going to be the theme all year long. Is it Brady without Belichick? Is it Belichick without Brady? What can Belichick and Josh McDaniels do with Jared Stidham to turn him into a quarterback that can make the Patriots competitive in their division? And with that extra playoff berth now available in each conference, can they at least be the number seven seed? It's been a long time since they haven't made the playoffs. The last time that happened was the year they lost Tom Brady week one. They still went 11 and five with Matt Castle, but they didn't make it to the postseason. The difference this time, they've got months to get ready to right. go without Tom Brady. Last time around, it happened week one of the regular season. This time it happened first day of free agency. So uh, they can't say they weren't ready, Chris, and they can't say they didn't have opportunities because still no. one of those guys is out there. The guy that's not, that's not on a team who will be unveiled very high on your list of the top quarterbacks in the NFL is available. If they wanted him, they could find a way to get Cam Newton. They're deliberately choosing to shy away from him and embracing Jared Stidham. So it tells me they believe in Stidham, which tells yes. me that the ceiling, the ceiling is the Patriots just the train just keeps on rolling. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. And, you know, and, and, and again, I've had a lot of people, you know, Jared Stidham, I had him in my 30s as far as the quarterback rankings. I had a lot of people ask me, like, hey, who the, who's the guy in the 30s that you could think you think can make the biggest jump, you know, from this year to next year? And Jared Stidham's the guy that jumps out to me. Again, you know, you, you saw some of the plays we, we watched last week in preseason football, and you watched them last year in the preseason to begin with anyways. You know, the kid's got talent. He really does. He can do it all on the football field. And he's a really good down the field thrower and he can make plays when nothing's there to be had, you know? So, Hey, this is, uh, this is plan a for new England. They believe in Stidham and don't be shocked if he's the, still the quarterback seven or eight years from now. I think that's how they see this unfolding. You know, the offensive line's got to play better. We know that, but they got Marquis Lee in free agency, Demir bird, Nikhil Harry. They need him to show up as a first round pick. Still got Julian Edelman. So there's a decent support system there for him to make things happen. And I think we'll, they'll play for their, through their defense. What do you think the floor is? I mean, the floor, I guess, is it just it's roughing it rough and Brian Hoyer ended up the, the coming in. The floor is the bench. The floor That's is the right. bench. Right. right? That, that it's just not working. And Bill Belichick is not going to take all season to admit it. If it's not working, it's not working. And in comes Brian yeah. Hoyer, period. So he won't exactly. hesitate. He will, will not hesitate. And that's how he's always been. You, you earn your way onto the field and you earn your ability to stay on the field. And if you're not earning it, we're going to find somebody else. We've got somebody else. We've got Brian Hoyer, and he comes. Real quickly, real quickly, Gardner Minshew. Nobody expects anything out of the Jaguars this year. This is an ideal scenario. The bar is as low as it can be for Minshew and the Jaguars. So, I mean, the floor is they live up to everyone's expectation that they're going to be the worst team in the NFL. The ceiling is they could surprise a lot of people if it clicks. Yes. I mean, the ceiling is he could put up unbelievable numbers and they could be a really explosive offense and he could throw for 30 touchdowns and seven or eight interceptions. You know, we talked about earlier in the show, there's weapons there, you know, decent old line, got some running backs. Jay Gruden's there. You know, he's capable of making some plays. There's no doubt about that. So, you know, I think the ceiling is just the continuation of Minshew mania and like, and I would say Pro Bowl votes, too. You know, it's hard to make the Pro Bowl in the AFC because there's kind of some good quarterbacks, you know, Lamar, Deshaun, Patrick Mahomes. But, you know, votes, possible, certainly. Yeah, floor is, okay, Gardner Minshew, you're not the guy, and we're going to be looking for a quarterback in the draft next year. That's kind of how I see it playing. But Gardner Minshew's got a chance to prove himself to be the guy for Jacksonville for a lot of years to come. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.